Yeah. This man has got an octopus on his face. <laughs> That's never good. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I guess this has turned out to be quite the popular drop-off destination down here, eh? Yeah, what is that, five or six this year already? Yeah, I would have kept count. Now watch you step there, you're gonna be number seven. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, thanks, Phyllis. Hey, you remember Donna? She's summoned in for Rose, who's down in Seattle on that Green River follow-up. Oh, good for her. Hey, yeah. nice to have you with us. How you doing? Good. Better than that guy. Hey, did you read that article in the paper about the bikers? That's a big news flash for you. Bikers control the docks. Oh, well, since Caesar already. <laughs> you know, I don't understand the media in this town. They got no teeth. We've been pussyfooting around that one for years. Somebody said you saw some shell casings up on the dock here? Shell casings, yeah, all around here, but mostly up around the other side of this barbecue pit thing over here. I'm gonna go take a look. You're not gonna help us get the squid off the man's face? Yeah, you can do that. Huh? Yeah, you, you can do that. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> boy, oh boy, oh boy. I never saw anything like well, this in my happened. life. I never heard of an octopus climbing on somebody before. You know, look at this here. Come on. This thing's only got seven tentacles. No, he's got to have eight. Everyone knows eight. Yeah, but he's only got seven. Two, three, four. I wonder if he was born that way or he lost it somehow. Anyway, anyway that's pretty unusual. I guess he wrote something somebody didn't like. Huh? Who is he? Uh, Donna says he's a journalist. He's got a pop right behind the ear. Oh, yeah? That's great. So I, hope, uh, I hope you put a stop to all this unnecessary gunplay when they put a badge on your chest there, sir. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. My first order of business, if I get that job, I'm going to come back, I'm going to deputize you. Always a sidekick, never the man. Story of my life. Yeah. All right. So you got an idea on the guy? Yeah, Lawrence Brownfield. Uh, yeah. He's a journalist. He's a journalist? Yeah, apparently. And it cross passed in his pocket. Works for a New York paper as a stringer, I guess. Oh, yeah. So does he live up here? Oh, no. He's an American. Lives in Seattle. Yeah? Yeah, we put a call into Seattle Homicide and made them aware. What about uh, what about a tape recorder, notebook, something like that, no? No, we didn't find it. We are calling this newspaper trying to find out uh, what he was doing up here and where he was staying. OK. Well, I'm going to check these casings out. They're uh, 22 caliber. There seems to be quite a few of them all around here. Now, most of them look like they've been here for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if the guy got shot right here or not. Ooh, who knows? apartment. What's the latest? Well, we've been canvassing all the houses along here, trying to find any uh, potential witnesses who might have seen anybody going in that building. There's a bit of a timeline we're trying to establish, and we're wondering, uh, did you keep track of Brian the night Rick died? That was the 13th? The 13th, yeah. together from about uh, four till nine. I went to the hospital, I had an informant that was laid up, wanted to see me, so I went in alone and Brian picked me up about an hour later. Can I see that? So between nine and 10 there, he's all on his own, huh? 
Uh, yeah, as far as I know, he was on his own. Jeff. You, uh, you looking for me? This yours? Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, just uh, visiting my mother there. Your mother lives there? That's what I said. Never complaining you're blocking her from getting out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm leaving right now, OK? Cancel that. Dominic, how's it going? Wanted to wish you good luck on your interview tomorrow. I'm going in for mine in a couple hours. Well, good luck to you, too. I see your own drag, the official drag. Looks very good, very law and order. You got your uh, six guns, got your spurs handy? <laughs> huh? You know, I, I just uh, I want you to understand that uh, it's no hard feelings here. It's just about two guys going for the same job, you know? Two guys going for the puck in the corner, that's all. Yeah, I'm not sure I really appreciate some of the tactics I've seen used so far in this, eh? What do you mean? This whole thing with Constable Klochko. Oh, hi, Maria. How are you doing? You need me? Yes. OK, just give me one second. The whole thing with Constable Klochko and stirring up all those negative feelings around that OD there, making me sound like I'm cavalier, actually saying that, and I didn't really appreciate that. Things Call happen, you know that. Well, it was a deliberate attempt to smear me, and it hurt me where I lived. And it's a very well-timed smear, too, in my sense. And I'm sorry it happened. Mm -hmm. OK. I just want to wish you good luck in getting the job. That's all. OK. And then, you know, the whole thing that went, the way that went down with Lenny, and getting busted, excuse me, on that drinking and driving thing. I, I, I can't forget how that went down there either. Eh? Look, I didn't want to get into this. I just wanted to say hello and clear the decks. Mm -hmm. So, in the uh, event that we go head to head in the future, sorry. You know, if I'm the chief, or if you're the chief, it's not clouded by a bunch of past things. But if you're going to hang on to these little things, it's going to be things. a rocky road. Little things. I wish you wouldn't call character assassination a little thing, my friend. Okay, it's uh, the thing about life is when you smear somebody, it's almost impossible to unsmear them. Of course, that's the whole point of using that as a tactic, isn't it? I don't believe I ever accused anyone of anything. Well, no, because it's all behind the scenes innuendo with you. It's all a bunch of <laughs> statements you're making. You're not actually accusing anybody, or you raise pointed questions. You want to call this whole thing a couple of guys going for a puck in the corner? You want to interpret this as a, as a game that's got a little out of control? OK. It's good to know. I can glad to know that about you now. It's all a game. You know what? What? I was going to say that you'd make a good chief. Bye. And if you got the job, I'd be more than happy to serve under you. But I'm going to change my mind. Oh. So this is an early resignation offer. You hear that? OK, you're a witness. OK, I accept. So I win and you resign. Beautiful. I'm going to change my mind and say that you're too much of a hothead to take a position that demands a cool temperament. Well, you know where your head is, eh? You know where your head is perfectly well. You know, you're just out there trying to preserve your little status quo bureaucracy. You're just chasing headlines, getting all your boys positioned down here on the downtown and east side and all that. But you, you know, myopic Excuse little me. eyes right in front of them. This whole city's being ignored. You got the docker, the docks being run by bikers down there. That's some serious. You got your head up your ass, my friend. Where are you going? Yeah, have an accident. Good morning. Take rest, me. Good morning. Yeah, just getting a few things off your chest, yeah, I see. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, well, it's good to do that sometimes. It's better than letting them stew, right? Yeah, you heard what I'm saying. Uh, uh, I'm going to grab a coffee. You want to walk with me? You really want to have a coffee with me? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Help you. I'm sorry about that. But, you know, I just the guy really gets my. OK, thanks. That was a morgue. 
Maria got the talks back on Rick, found some heavy sleeping pills in his system on top of the heroin. Oh, so he's pretty doped up then when he was killed. Uh -huh. That would explain why he didn't put up much of a fight, huh? Uh huh. So, uh, where's Brian? Where's he meeting Marla? Just up at the dim sum place. I got a page from her a minute ago. He just left, so he's gonna be by any second. Okay, so what do you wanna do? You wanna wind him up a little when he gets here? Yeah, see how he reacts. Here he comes. There you go. Hey. Hey, Ange. Hey, Brian. Well, what are you doing? I'm uh, just uh, doing some grocery shopping. Hey, Brian. Oh, hey. Good to see you. Actually, I had a couple questions for you. Yeah? Yeah, I just heard that uh, you were talking to Sue, Ange's friend. Uh-huh. And that uh, she might know a little bit more about Rick's death than she's letting on. Oh, yeah, I was just, uh, I was just shooting my mouth off. I mean, I don't really know much about it. Yeah? Because somebody said that you thought maybe I was protecting her. Uh, I mean, maybe I, I said something like that. I, I, you know, no offense, I just, you know me, I'm always yakking, right? Yeah, whatever. We were wondering what you knew about her. Yeah, I mean, hey, maybe I was getting sucked into her story, right? I mean, maybe you know something I don't, hmm? Well, it's just that, uh, I mean, she talks out of both sides of her mouth, right? I mean, in my experience, I mean, you know, she pretty much say anything for the price of a high, right? So she's, she's looking like a, a pretty good suspect now, huh? Is that it? You know, maybe you could do us a favor. If you see her in your travels, why don't you give us a call? Yeah, absolutely. Take it easy, Brian. Yeah, always do, huh? So what do you want to do? I think we should talk to Sue and get her to do something for us. Yeah, hey, maid hasn't been in yet, so. All right. Well, don't let anyone in for the time being. We're just going to have a look around. Well, uh, I'll be at the desk if you need me. Okay. They own this hotel, you know. Who? Who owns it? The bikers. Yeah. You can go now. They own a lot of real estate. Why not? It's a good investment. Yeah, they do good business here. They make a good burger downstairs there. Yeah, they're halibut and chips. Batter's very light, not too greasy. Yeah. Nothing in here, just a shaving kit and a toothbrush. Yeah, he's got a suit hanging up there. Nothing in the dresser. Suitcase is open here. Like he's been living out of it, I guess. <laughs> Got a CD here, some pizza. When did you check in here? Mm, two weeks ago. He's got a pocket thesaurus and a dictionary. What the hell is this? There's something under here. Hey, got a laptop under here. Huh. Change of the bed. You're gonna have to get somebody to get that off. Yeah. This looks like one of those titanium locks, I think. He's got a family photo here. Wife and two sweet kids. Yeah, probably got it there so he can see their faces at night when he calls them. Yeah. I know how these damn things work at all. Oh, what's this? Little bedside reading. Thomas De Quincey Confessions of an English Opium Eater. Hey, look at this. Cigarette butts. Got lipstick stains on them. Pizza in his room. Okay, you want to go check in the pub, see if anybody in there saw him, all right? Good. Oh, hey. No, not you. You want to get the night man down here for us? Clerk inside's got his name. We'll be down at the only. Okay. I'm to get something to eat. I'm starving. I was starving. That's right. Yeah. Come on, may I speak to him, please? Hey! <laughs> I'm just thinking about you. So, good news, we got something on that journalist. Yeah. It's great. I've been reading the paper. 
You're in the paper? Mm-hmm. You're taking a lot of heat in that safe injection site. All the safe injection site. Yeah, well, people just can't stand change. It's true. Can't stand it. Yep. We'll get back to you. That was our victim's editor. Apparently, he was uh, working on an article on the drug scene up here. Oh. BC Bud going across the border, smacked heroin the whole nine yards. Okay. Says it's one of our biggest exports, way ahead of cattle, timber, and wheat. Seven billion dollars a year. Wow. That's seven billion dollars American. That's what it is. Okay, well, I hear bells going off. What do you think's going on? Oh, well, it's nice to know what we're famous for in the eyes of the rest of the world. Or well, the BC Bud. Yeah. Anyway, he says that uh, he was working on something related, you know what I mean? But. Uh, he didn't go into any details about it. He said he was going to send them some copy. Oh, you say who his sources were up here, maybe? Uh, no, he said he wouldn't have any way of knowing who that might be. Well, I mean, that's no surprise. Those guys would rather go to jail than give up one of those. It's kind of like giving up a good snitch. Yeah, anyway, he said he was going to email them some pictures. He said he had a digital camera with him and a uh, tape recorder, one of those little ones. Oh, we that's didn't great. find any camera or tape recorder. That's too bad. Yeah, there's nothing there? No. Nope. No, but he also said that he had an appointment with you to talk about your safe injection sites. Oh, they interview me? Yeah, and apparently you canceled the interview because of your uh, meeting with the police board. No, no, no. Okay, that sounds weird. I better check that with Ellen. Yeah. I gotta take off. I wish I could finish off this. All right. Okay, All right. I'll be on my cell, okay? We'll catch you later. So, I guess we'll wait, see what's wet in the laptop. That can take a while. with me, I gotta get something to eat, my God. Nowadays, they got these computers. They're so tiny, they fit in the palm of your hand. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter what kind of machine I'm using. I'm still typing with just two fingers. Hey, Zach, what's going on? Somebody stole my car. They stole your car? Yeah, yeah, I was parked right around the corner. I'm on hold to ICBC. Got my car, they got my computer, they got all my action reports, they got everything, they got my cell phone. I'm totally screwed. Oh, that sucks, man. Hey, the beard looks good, though. Like it. You guys got somebody who saw your journalist last night. Oh, yeah. Asked me to come find you? Yeah. Well, the, uh, the night man, he came in, he says he knows the witness. Well, where's the witness? Back at the hotel. Okay, we should get on that. Yeah, oh, God, I'm going to be chewing on my fingers in a minute here, you know what yeah. I mean? Listen, could you do me a favor? Yeah. Could you go in there and get me a meatball sandwich sure. and then find me? Okay, right. yeah. They got the computer opened up. They got it opened up? All right. Uh, well, you want to go do that and I'll go talk to the night man? All right. All right. Yeah, meatball sandwich. Yeah. Hey, Phil. Hey, sorry, sorry. The rush meeting. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, I got my meeting with the police board tomorrow. My interview. Tomorrow's the day. Yeah. Any advice? Well, you know, I gave you my advice a couple months ago. I told you to drop out of the running. Yeah. You didn't listen. Okay. Well, I know what they're going to ask me, and I just want to kind of run it by you. Just give me one second, okay? Probably what they're going to ask me. You know what I'm going to recommend. Within the department, changes and how I'm going to do them. That's the old, uh, you're going to rock the boat question, right? Okay. Hey, excuse yeah. me, can I get some way with my chairs? Have you had those? They're great. You can't fall in the trap. Huh? You've got to say that you're going to study the situation and make recommendations. Okay. Well, what I was going to tell them, basically, I've emphasized that uh, I'm all in favor of this community uh, policing thing, right? Also, um, I think that they've got to really start considering some fairly radical measures, like, say, combining the police and fire department. You can't say that. What? you, you got to say you're going to study the situation and, and consult with them. You think that there's a number of efficiencies that might help deliver better services. you got to be vague. Be vague. That's a language that they understand and appreciate. I don't know if I agree with that approach, well, I know though. you don't. That's why I'm giving you this advice. Huh? You want to hear the sound of your own voice? I'll, I'll shut up now. No, no, no. no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just finish what you're going to say right there. I, I, I'm telling you. Okay. you got to tell them what they want to hear. You won't rock the boat, right? You got to present an image that says status quo. I just thought I'd go in there and just like be myself. Why? It's gonna scare them. How's it gonna scare them? You're a thoughtful man with complicated and sometimes conflicted opinions on the issues. Right? People right now want the security of black and white answers. I do. Law and order, crime and punishment. You know the whole either-or dichotomy. Gray is a terrifying color at the moment. Okay, I should just walk in there completely bowl my way through this. Absolutely. You're being frank and straightforward. You might feel refreshing them for about as long as the interview lasts, right? As soon as that door slams, they're gonna take out those long knives and shove you in the back. Huh? Okay. You gotta understand, if you're selected, you gotta do what they want. Right? They're not gonna select a man who they can't control. Jack. Jack. Oh, hi, Tom. How's it going? Very good. Oh, that's a little worse for wear. Yeah. What happened there? Brenda moved out. And it, and it, look, I feel I'm in a nightmare here. I got to meet with a couple of homicide detectives. I think you know them. Yeah. Uh, Leary and Cosmo. You sure, know them, sure. right? 
doing a good word for me, we These are good people. All you have to do there is just talk straight to them. Maybe they can find a way to help you lead you out of this mess here. I hope so. I, yeah. I took a hell of a wrong turn somewhere, man. We're still getting together later. You still want to do that? Yeah, please. Sure. Okay, I'm just going to go with the mayor off. It shouldn't be too long. I'll call you right after, OK? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Please, just talk straight to them. Hello. Hang in there, Jack. Hey, yeah, somebody was with him last night. Gal, blonde hair. Blonde hair? About how old was she? I don't know. Late 30s, maybe? Anyway, he came in with her, and they went up to his room. Uh, what time was that about? 9.15, 9.30, about 20 minutes later, they came back down. They came back down. Uh, what did they do then, or did you notice? Him, yeah, he had me call a cab, which I did. Her, I don't know, she went out the door. She went out the door, they called a cab. Do you remember which cab company it was? Yeah, sure, yellow. And uh, did you ever see this woman with him before? No, uh-uh. No, huh? All right, then. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming down early. No. Appreciate it, really. Hey. Our guy from uh, last night, he uh, he took a cab from here, a yellow cab. See okay. if you can track down the driver for us, will you? Will do, yeah. Hey, hey, is that my sandwich? <laughs> Jeez, sorry, yeah. I forgot, yeah, your sandwich. It's a uh, meatball, everything on it. All okay, right, and they said that uh, you can pay him next time you're in? Oh, great, thanks. Coming, you don't have to hang on to There's me. no damn ketchup. Well, you know, ready? She just grabbed my ass. Hey, hey, come on, calm down now. What, what the hell is all I'm this? I'm in the pub there asking if anybody remembers seeing the reporter in there. The bartender points her out. Says they were talking a couple of times in there. I mean, Shelly Ryan. I've seen her around. All right, Shelly, do you want to tell me about this gentleman that you were with last night? Nothing to tell. He was friendly. He bought me a drink. He just walked up to you and started talking out of the blue? Yeah, he was friendly. That's why you went up to his room with him. I didn't go up to his room. This guy's mistaken. Yes, you did. You went up to his room and you smoked a couple of cigarettes. Now, listen, I haven't had any breakfast and I'm getting a little cranky. He was asking about geography. Geography? Yeah. About the downtown east side, where the drugs are at. You went up to his room to talk about the drug scene? Yeah, he wanted to put me on tape. Wanted my life story. Oh, you must have been up there quite a while then, huh? No. As soon as we got up there, he got a call on his cell phone. He left. Who was calling him, did he say? No. And then what'd you do? I went home. You went home? Yeah. All right. You take her, get a statement, get her particulars, and then find out if she's in the system anywhere. Right. Let's go. Uh, he's got a load of files on the computer. He was writing all kinds of articles for a lot of different papers, so it's going to take a while to sort it all out. Anything you can tell me right now? Well, yeah, a little. One of the things he was doing was uh, downloading a lot of information on the Vancouver docks. The docks? Yeah. What kind of information was he interested in? Well, a lot of statistics. Shipping, uh, container traffic, customs reports, uh, all that. Did you find any photographs in his documents? Photographs? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, but he's got a, got a list of uh, phone numbers. Uh, it's in the truck here. Yeah, this is it here. See? Da Vinci's is on there. The mayor's. That's the number of the Union Hall down at the uh, docks. And they also had a bunch of individual numbers, a couple of them. I looked those up. One of them's a customs officer, Carl Moore. The other one's a pizza joint. Huh. I'll let this out. Did you find anything that you've been writing recently, you know, like over the last couple of days? Well, the last thing he wrote was uh, some notes on a safe injection site, but uh, like I say, there's still a bunch of files we have to sort through. Well, it's a good start. So, tomorrow's the big day, huh? Yeah, I guess it is. You'll do fine. Just go on in there, be yourself, you'll do fine. Be myself? <laughs> What's the matter? Are you having some last-minute regrets? No, 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 it's not, no. I'm pretty much ready for whatever happens. Good. That's great. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to wish you luck. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'd let you know they're going to grill you pretty good about the downtown east side. Downtown east side? There was a, uh, a journalist murdered last night down there, down on the docks. He was investigating the, the, the biker angle down there, eh? Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I think we really stuck a hot poker in some people's eyes with this um, injection site, boy. No doubt. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. So you think there's some connection there? Or? I don't know. I do think there is. Yeah, I do. Hey, Tommy. That's OK. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, no problem. Can I help you? We got this reporter who was doing our story on the docks. 
Is that the one they found shot? Yeah. That's what he's working on? Yeah. Now, uh, if you had a guy you see down here, and I'm not asking you if you do, but if you did, he might know something. Well, if I did have someone you see down here, I probably wouldn't be hearing from him on a regular basis, right? So, there's not a lot I can tell you right now. Right, I understand. But if you hear anything? If I hear anything. Yeah. Thanks. Anything? SFA. I told you he wasn't going to tell us anything. Just put a bug in his ear. Here comes your new girlfriend. Uh -huh. Man, it's don't embarrass me. I do that all on my own. Hey, Sue. I might have something for you. I might have something good. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, I'm cruising the East End on a robbery report this morning, and I run into this constable that I've been dating on and off. Oh, yeah? You've been dating this guy? How's that going? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not the point. He tells me that he ran into my old partner this morning at his mother's house, meaning Brian. And I say his mother's house. His mother's, you know, dead. And she, she never lived in Vancouver. She never left Winnipeg. Point being, he caught Brian coming out of a garage in an alley. So I said, show me. We go down there, and the landlord's taking out the garbage. And I said, you know, he rents this garage. And she says, oh, a cop. But I think I'm going to kick him out because he's late with the rent. So I said, would you mind showing me? You know, I'm looking for some storage myself. You want to take us there? Yeah. You know the story. We got thousands of these containers coming in going out of here every day. If uh, we're looking at maybe 1% of them is coming in, going out, dope, contraband, whatever, we're not going to catch it. Well, this was the kind of thing that this reporter was asking you about? Yeah, but I got the feeling he knew all about that, that he was just baiting the hook, you know? Did he catch what he was fishing for? Yeah. What he wanted was uh, information on the unions down here, on the bikers controlling the ports, all that. Kind of wanted an insight into how it all worked. Well, that's a black hole. What did you tell him? No port police anymore. What the hell do people expect? It's wide open down here. OK, do you remember what time it was about that you had this conversation with him? Um, I get on shift at 8 a.m., so I guess this would have been about 9.30. 9.30, so uh, was there a lot of activity around there? There was a ship unloading, yeah, there was lots of activity. So almost anybody could have seen him talk to you then? Yeah, I guess. Okay. He was uh, he was also asking me questions about customs officers taking rides. Oh, you know something about that, do you? Well, I told him you hear about it happening all around the world. Yeah, OK, all right. Hey, I, you guys found him over by the sugar refinery there? Yeah, just down under the pier there. That's where the guys plunk at the seals sometimes. What, what do you mean? On their lunch break, the guys take pot shots at the seals. There's lots of seals around here lately. Oh, my god. <laughs> yeah, that's pitiful, taking shots at defenseless animals like that. How much is the rent? $100 a month. Sounds pretty reasonable. How long has Brian been renting it? About four years now. We better back out and get a warrant. See if we can get one in the QT. Yeah. Lying there, what? With the covers pulled up around his neck, his throat was slit. Hey, open the uh, open the glove box there. Go ahead, open it up. There's something in there. The bag there, pull it out. Take a look inside. Check it out. What's this? It's the uh, mur the murder weapon. What are you gonna do with it? You were right there after he got killed, right? I mean, a homicide talk to you, right? Yeah. Where'd you get this? Well, maybe I got it from you. <laughs> You're not sticking me with it. What are you doing? Shut up! 
the hell are you doing? You don't take it off like okay. that. Calm down. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Calm down. Just... Okay, calm down. Calm down. Come on. Shh. It's okay. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Okay, come on, get up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Listen. Now listen to me, okay? Listen. Listen. Okay, now. Listen to me. Now you're gonna do. You're gonna. You're gonna do what I tell you to do, okay? And it, cause if, you, if you don't, baby, if you don't do what I tell you to do, then you're gonna get done for Rick's murder, and you realize that, right? No, please, okay, be whatever it is, I'll do it. Okay, whatever it is. I want you to, I want you to take this knife, and I want you, to, I want you to put it in the councilman's car. Okay, please just put this in the councilman's car. Please. Okay. Please. Okay, please. Okay. Please. Okay. Please. okay, now get off. <laughs> like that. All you had to do is tell me. <laughs> Come on, Shelly, open up. I know you're in there. Yeah, I thought it sounded like cops knocking. What do you want? Seems to me you left out some uh, important details when last we spoke. Oh, yeah, I did? Like what? Like you were a customs officer that did time for taking bribes and you have heavy connections to the bikers down on the docks. So? So, start over, you and this journalist, you go up to his room. What was that all about? Well, he wanted me to find someone who could talk to him about how things work down there. Uh-huh. And how did he know to be asking you about that? <sighs> he knew I'd done time. So you didn't meet up with him by accident, like you said? Okay, I heard he was asking about me. I got kind of curious. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? So what happened? Did you uh, introduce him to somebody to talk to down on the docks? No, what are you I didn't. I. Oh, what do yeah, we got here? That's what I was telling him. I what couldn't help him out, and then everything. He oh yeah, this is dope. Hey, take her downstairs. Put her in custody. Come on, you can't. You can't bust me. No, no, this we're tossing your room. Go on, get out of here. Go with the officer. Can I get my jacket, please? All right, I want yeah, you guys to go up and down the hallway, see who's home. I want to know what she's been up to. Anything. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, tell him wait there. We'll meet him at the dispatch. Okay. That was our cab driver who picked up our reporter last night. Yeah. He's gonna show us where he dropped him off. This car's in the parking lot. It's, uh, number three. It's a burgundy Japanese thing. It's open. So just, you know, hop in there and pop the trunk and, and take a knife and put it in where, he, he, uh, where the spare tire is. You just take the knife out of the bag and take it out of the cloth and just, just, just stick it in there. girl and the winner gets the prize <laughs> so when are you gonna run him out very good very good very very good is he gonna get arrested soon or what very good, very good. You gotta watch watch the papers read the news <laughs> okie dokie read the read the papers yeah i've been enjoying working with you yeah, me too. I've been enjoying working with you. It's been good for me. 
So that's why you won't take me up on the offer to sleep on the couch? What? Huh? Uh, you're worried that uh, maybe we'll get into something that'll spoil the partnership? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, thinking along those lines, too. Yeah. Mm hmm But I promise I'll, I'll try and keep my hands off if you just want to come to a place to sleep. No, not a good idea. I don't think you'll be able to resist me. <laughs> you're right. I'll just drop you on the beach. He's heading for the docks. Yeah, looks like it. So, uh, where was I? You were, uh, dating a narcotics detective? Yeah, I was past that part. Oh, uh, he was about to make a big bust on the yeah, docks. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, they got the whole dock staked out, right? It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. They're offloading the shipment. They got, I don't know, 20 cops watching the whole thing? And all of a sudden, the lights go out. What, on the whole dock, all the lights go out? The whole dock's up and down the streets for half a mile. It's pitch black. Nobody can see anything. Everybody's scrambling, right? When they finally get down there to make the bust, guess what? No dope, no drug dealers, dock's empty, nada. I mean, can you imagine what kind of network that takes to pull something like that off? Yeah, well, you know, that's what I've been saying. Nobody's ever going to figure out how things work down here on the dock. It's too complicated. There's too many legs, you know what I'm saying? You cut off one leg, there's seven more that you didn't even know about. So, it's been going on too long, it's too big. You wanna fix it, you're gonna have to start all over from scratch. And that's not gonna happen because there's too many people making too much money. It's always about the money. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember this place. This is where you told me to grow up huh? and realize that Brenda was probably dating a few other 50-year-old men besides myself. Uh, yeah, I think I recall. Uh -huh. Hard to hear in here, I guess. Hard to hear up here. I think I should have heard you when you told me that. Maybe I shouldn't take a run at this police job. I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Uh, well, you should have said something, because it would have saved me some grief. <laughs> I think you got a good shot at it. And that's what I said. Here's a little something for your collection. These are pretty serious sleeping pills, Jane. Yep. Why don't you get these? Brenda Brenda sold them to her. Friend of Brenda's? Hmm? What are you doing with them? Those are the pills I was going to take tonight. I'm going to mix them into a nice Cabernet and say, Arrivederci, cruel world. Well, what happened to change your mind? You said you'd meet me later. I actually found myself looking forward to being scathingly criticized for being such a complete idiot. And uh, I appreciate that you kept your word. Well, here's the idiots. Neat <laughs> idiots. I'm starting to get cold now. Like. Yeah, I'm soaked. Uh, I like it like this. Well, I'm cold and I'm wet. Now, why am I here? Well, Leo's got a theory. He's also got a Mickey. Scott should go with him. Let's hear your theory there, now. OK. Well, our friend, the reporter, who was an honest, ink-stained member of the once honorable brotherhood of the pen, okay. meets up with this ex-customs officer who sends him on a wild goose chase down to the docks here okay. and tells him that he's going to meet up with somebody who's going to give him the inside dope on who rules the dogs and how. All right. Yeah. We know this part because we found the cab driver who drove him down here. Right, right, right. So I'm thinking he's, uh, he's waiting down here, out in the open, right in the light here, right? Maybe somewhere, oh, yeah. I don't know, say he was right around in here somewhere. Watch yourself. Don't go falling in there because I'm not jumping in there. I'm not going to fall in. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> our guy is standing here, and he's looking down this way, I'm thinking, because he's expecting somebody to come from down there, either in a vehicle or walking, right? Okay. Now, he's no yokel. He knows he is on dangerous ground, but I'm thinking that's probably what he liked about his job. Well, I think that's true. I read about this guy. He was in Afghanistan chasing down the heroin stuff in the 90s. He's yeah, all yeah. over the place, right? Really? Well, okay. Well, there you go. So okay. he's standing out here in the open, 
and he's looking down this way. He doesn't see a little fish boat coming by here, running with the lights out, just putting along, not making a sound. Guy on the deck picks up the 22, picks him up, over he goes into the drink. Asked the wrong question, huh? He asked the wrong question of the wrong people at the wrong time. And that, my friend, is the general mess that you're gonna have to deal with if you get the job. Thanks for bringing that up again, man. Let me hit on that, will you? <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Good. You going up for that interview with the police board? It's in five minutes. I'm on time. Oh, man. Good luck, pal. Hey, thanks. Hey, and thanks for the drinks last night. Hey, you can call me anytime, man. Don't forget it. Dominic. Not just yet. There's going to be a couple of minutes, and I'm mm. going to call you in. Come on. Do you want anything? I'm holding a cigarette. You're going to be fine. Hey, break a leg. Thanks, man. <clears throat> We're ready for you. Okay. All caught on camera. Yeah, we rode together from about uh, four till nine. I went to the hospital. I had an informant that was laid up, wanted to see me, so I went in alone. And Brian picked me up about an hour later. Can I see that? So between nine and ten, there. So on his own. Huh? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, he was on his own. Jeff. You, uh, you looking for me? This yours? Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, just uh, visiting my mother there. Your mother lives there? That's what I said. You never complain you're blocking her from getting out. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm leaving right now, OK? Cancel that. Dominic, how's it going? Wanted to wish you good luck on your interview tomorrow. I'm going in for mine in a couple hours. Well, good luck to you, too. I see your own drag, the official drag. Looks very good, very law and order. You got your uh, six guns, got your spurs handy? <laughs> huh? You know, I, I just uh, I want you to understand that uh, it's no hard feelings here. It's just about two guys going for the same job, you know? Two guys going for the puck in the corner, that's all. Yeah, I'm not sure I really appreciate some of the tactics I've seen used so far in this, eh? What do you mean? This whole thing with Constable Klochko. Oh, hi, Maria. How are you doing? You need me? Yes. OK, just give me one second. The whole thing with Constable Klochko and stirring up all those negative feelings around that OD there, making me sound like I'm cavalier, actually saying that, and I didn't really appreciate that. Things Call happen, you know that. Well, it was a deliberate attempt to smear me, and it hurt me where I lived. And it's a very well-timed smear, too, in my sense. And I'm sorry it happened. Mm -hmm. OK. I just want to wish you good luck in getting the job. That's all. OK. 
And then, you know, the whole thing that went, the way that went down with Lenny. I had to wish you luck. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'd let you know they're gonna grill you pretty good about the downtown east side. Downtown east side? There was a, uh, a journalist murdered last night down there, down on the docks. He was investigating the, the, the biker angle down there, eh? Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I think we really stuck a hot poker in some people's eyes with this um, injection site, boy. No doubt. What do you think? <laughs> so you think there's some connection there? Or? Uh -huh. I do think there is. Yeah, I do. Hey, Tommy. That's OK. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, no problem. Can I help you? We got this reporter who was doing a story on the docks. The one that found shot? Yeah. So he's working on? Yeah. Now, uh, if you had a guy you see down here, and I'm not asking you if you do, but if you did, he might know something. Well, if I did have someone you see down here, I probably wouldn't be hearing from him on a regular basis, right? So there's not a lot I can tell you right now. Right, I understand. But if you hear anything? If I hear anything. Yeah. Thanks. SFA. I told you he wasn't going to tell us anything. Just putting a bug in his ear. Here comes your new girlfriend. Oh, man, it's don't embarrass me. To do that all on my own. Hey, Sue. I might have something for you. I might have something good. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, I'm cruising the East End on a robbery report this morning, and I run into this constable that I've been dating on and off. Oh, yeah? You've been dating this guy? How's that going? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not the point. He tells me that he ran into my old partner this morning at his mother's house, meaning Brian, and I have to tell you, his mother's house. His mother's, you know, dead. And she, she never lived in Vancouver. She never left Winnipeg. Point being, he caught Brian coming out of a garage in an alley. So I said, show me. We go down there, and the landlord's taking out the garbage. And I said, you know, he rents this garage. And she says, oh, a cop, but I think I'm going to kick him out because he's late with the rent. So I said, would you mind showing me? You know, I'm looking for some storage myself. You want to take us there? Yeah. You know the story. We got thousands of these containers coming in, going out of here every day. If uh, we're looking at maybe one percent of them is coming in, going out, dope, contraband, whatever, we're not going to catch it. Well, this was the kind of thing that this reporter was asking you about. Yeah, but I got the feeling he knew all about that. That he was just baiting the hook. You know. Did he catch what he was fishing for? Yeah. What he wanted was uh, information on the unions down here, on the bikers controlling the ports, all that. Kind of wanted an insight into how it all worked. Well, that's a black hole. What did you tell him? No port police anymore. What the hell do people expect? It's wide open down here. OK, do you remember what time it was about that you had this conversation with him? Um, I get on shift at 8 AM, so I guess this would have been about 9.30. 9.30, so uh, was there a lot of activity around there? There was a shift. Where was I? You were uh, dating a narcotics detective. Yeah, I was past that part. Uh, he was about to make a big bust on the Yeah, dogs. yeah. So anyways, they got the whole dock staked out, right? It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. They're offloading the shipment. They got, I don't know, 20 cops watching the whole thing. When all of a sudden, the lights go out. What on the whole dock, all the lights go out? The whole dock's up and down the streets for half a mile. It's pitch black, nobody can see anything. Everybody's scrambling, right? When they finally get down there to make the bust, guess what? No dope, no drug dealers, dock's empty, nada. I mean, can you imagine what kind of network that takes to pull something like that off? Yeah, well, you know, that's what I've been saying. Nobody's ever going to figure out how things work down here on the dock. It's too complicated. There's too many legs. You know what I'm saying? You cut off one leg, there's seven more that you didn't even know about. So, it's been going on too long. It's too big. You want to fix it, you're going to have to start all over from scratch. And that's not going to happen because there's too many people making too much money. It's always about the money. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember this place. This is where you told me to grow up huh? and realize that Brenda was probably dating a few other 50-year-old men besides myself. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I recall. Uh -huh. Hard to hear in here, I guess. Hard to hear up here. I think I should have heard you when you told me that. Maybe I shouldn't take a run at this police job. I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Uh. Well, you should have said something, because it would have saved me some grief. <laughs> I think you got a good shot at it. And that's what I said. Here's a little something for your collection. These are pretty serious sleeping pills, John. Yep. Why don't you get these? 
Brenda Brandis sold them to her. Brenda Brandis? Hmm. What are you doing with them? Those are the pills I was going to take tonight. I'm going to mix them into a nice Cabernet and say Arrivederci, cruel world. Well, what happened to change your mind? You said you'd meet me later. I actually found myself looking forward to being scathingly criticized for being such a complete idiot. And uh, I appreciate that you kept your word. Well, here's the idiots. <laughs> Neat idiots. I'm starting to get cold now. Yeah, I'm soaked. Uh, I like it like this. Well, I'm cold and I'm wet. No wine right here. This police job. I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Uh, well, you should have said something, because it would have saved me some grief. <laughs> I think you got a good shot at it. And that's what I said. Here's a little something for your collection. These are pretty serious sleeping pills, Jane. Where'd you get these? Friend of Brandis sold them to her. Friend of Brandis? Hmm? What are you doing with them? Those are the pills I was going to take tonight. I'm going to mix them into a nice Cabernet and say Arrivederci, cruel world. Well, what happened to change your mind? You said you'd meet me later. I actually found myself looking forward to being scathingly criticized for being such a complete idiot. And uh, I appreciate that you kept your word. Well, here's the idiots. <laughs> Neat idiots. I'm starting to get cold now. Yeah, I'm soaked. Uh, I like it like this. Well, I'm cold and I'm wet. No wine right here? Well, Leo's got a theory. He's also got a Mickey of Scotch. Go with him. Let's hear your theory there, now. OK. Well, our friend, the reporter, who was an honest, ink-stained member of the once honorable brotherhood of the pen, okay. meets up with this ex-customs officer who sends him on a wild goose chase down to the docks here okay. and tells him that he's going to meet up with somebody who's going to give him the inside dope on who rules the docks and how. All right. Yeah. We know this part because we found the cab driver who drove him down here. Right, right, right. So I'm thinking he's uh, he's waiting down here, out in the open, right in the light here, right? Maybe somewhere, oh, I don't know, say he was right around in here somewhere. Watch yourself. Don't go fall in there because I'm not jumping in there. I'll tell you Sorry, I'm not going to fall in there. <laughs> I haven't had that much to drink yet. Anyway. Cheers. Our guy is standing here, and he's looking down this way, I'm thinking, because He's expecting somebody to come from down there, either in a vehicle or walking, right? Okay. Now, he's no yokel. He knows he's on dangerous ground, but I'm thinking that's probably what he liked about his job. Well, I think that's true. I read about this guy. He was in Afghanistan chasing down the heroin stuff in the 90s. He's yeah, all yeah. over the place, right? Really? Well, okay. Well, there you go. So okay. he's standing out here in the open, and he's looking down this way. He doesn't see a little fish boat coming by here running with the lights out, just putting along, not making a sound. Guy on the deck picks up the 22, picks him off, over he goes. With the covers pulled up around his neck, his throat was slit. Hey, open, the, uh, open the glove box there. Go ahead, open it up. There's something in there. The bag there, pull it out. Take a look inside, check it out. What's this? It's the, uh, the murder weapon. What are you going to do with it? Well, you, you were right there after he got killed, right? I mean, the homicide talked to you, right? Yeah. Where'd you get this? Well, maybe I got it from you. <laughs> You're not sticking me with it. What are you doing? Hey, oh. Shut up! What the hell are you doing? You don't take it off like okay. that. Calm down! Shut up! Shut up! Oh, 
calm down. Just calm. Okay, calm down, calm down. Come on, shh. It's okay, it's okay, baby, it's okay. Okay, come on, get him. Come on. Come on, come on. Listen. Now listen to me, okay? Listen. Listen. Okay, now. Listen to me. Now you're gonna do... You're gonna... You're gonna do what I tell you to do, okay? And it, cause if, you, if you don't, baby, if you don't do what I tell you to do, then you're gonna get done for Rick's murder, and then you realize that, right? No, please, okay, you gotta... whatever it is, I'll do it. Okay, whatever it is. I want you to, I want you to take this knife, and I want you to, I want you to put it in the councilman's car. Okay, please just put this in the councilman's car. Please. Okay. Please. Okay, please. Okay. Please. Okay, now get off. <laughs> like that. All you had to do is tell me. <laughs> Come on, Shelly, open up. I know you're in there. Yeah, I thought it sounded like cops knocking. What do you want? Seems to me you left out some uh, important details when last we spoke. Oh, yeah, I did? Like what? Like you were a customs officer that did time for taking bribes and you have heavy connections to the bikers down on the docks. So? So, start over, you and this journalist, you go up to his room. What was that all about? Well, he wanted me to find someone who could talk to him about how things work down there. Uh-huh. And how did he know to be asking you about that? <sighs> he knew I'd done time. So you didn't meet up with him by accident, like you said? Okay, I heard he was asking about me. I got kind of curious. Oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? So what happened? Did you uh, introduce him to somebody to talk to down on the docks? No, what are you I didn't. That's right. As soon as that door slams, they're going to take out those long knives and shove you in the back. Okay. You got to understand. If you're selected, you got to do what they want. They're not going to select a man who they can't control. Jack. Jack. Oh, hi, Tom. How's it going? Very good. Oh. I told the worst for wear. Yeah. I don't know. Brenda moved out. And it, 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 look, I feel I'm in a nightmare here. I got to meet with a couple of homicide detectives. I think you know them there. Yeah. Uh, Leary and Cosmo. You sure, know them, sure. right? Put in a good word for me, we? These are good people. All you have to do there is just talk straight to them. Maybe they can find a way to help you lead you out of this mess here. I hope so. I, yeah. I took a hell of a wrong turn somewhere, man. We're still getting together later. You still want to do that? Yeah, please. Yeah, right, I'm just going to go into mayor off. It shouldn't be too long. I'll call you right after, OK? Yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. Please, just talk straight to them. Hello. Hang in there, Jack. Hey, yeah, somebody was with him last night. Gal, blonde hair. Blonde hair? About how old was she? I don't know. Late 30s, maybe? Anyway, he came with her, and they went up to his room. Uh, what time was that about? 9.15, 9.30, about 20 minutes later, they came back down. They came back down. Uh, well, what did they do then, or did you notice? Him, yeah, he had me call a cab, which I did. Her, I don't know, she went out the door. She went out the door, they called a the cab. You remember which cab company it was? Yeah, sure, yellow. And uh, did you ever see this woman with him before? No, uh, uh No, huh? All right, then. OK, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming down early. Well, Appreciate it, really. Hey. Our guy from uh, last night, he, uh, he took a cab from here, a yellow cab. See okay. if you can track down the driver for us, will you? Will do. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, is that my sandwich? <laughs> Jeez, sorry. Yeah. I forgot, yeah, your sandwich. It's a uh, meatball, everything on it. All OK, right, and they said that uh, you can pay him next time you're in? Oh, great, thanks. Coming. You don't have to hang on. There's no damn ketchup. Gee. Are you not ready? She just grabbed my ass. Hey, hey, come on, calm down now. What, what the hell is all I'm this? In the pub, they're asking if anybody remembers seeing the reporter in there. The bartender points her out. Says they were talking a couple of times in there. I mean, Shelly Ryan. I've seen her around. All right, Shelly, do you want to tell me about this gentleman that you were with last night? Nothing to tell. He was friendly. He bought me a drink. He just walked up to you and started talking out of the blue? Yeah, he was friendly. That's why you went up to his room with him. I didn't go up to his room. This guy's mistaken. Yes, you did. You went up to his room and you smoked a couple of cigarettes. Now, listen, I haven't had any breakfast and I'm getting a little cranky. He was asking about geography. Geography? Yeah, about the downtown east side, where the drugs are at. You went up to his room to talk about the drug scene? Yeah, he wanted to put me on tape, wanted my life story. Oh, you must have been up there quite a while then, huh? No, 
As soon as we got up there, he got a call on his cell phone, he left. Yeah, I thought it sounded like cops knocking. What do you want? Seems to me you left out some uh, important details when last we spoke. Oh, yeah, I did? Like what? Like you were a customs officer that did time for taking bribes and you have heavy connections to the bikers down on the docks. So? So start over, you and this journalist, you go up to his room. What was that all about? Well, he wanted me to find someone who could talk to him about how things work down there. Uh-huh. And how did he know to be asking you about that? <sighs> he knew I'd done time. So you didn't meet up with him by accident, like you said? Okay, I heard he was asking about me. I got curious. Oh, what's this? Oh, Sam. So what happened? Did you uh, introduce him to somebody to talk to down on the docks? No, what are you I didn't. I. Oh, what yeah, are we doing here? That's what I was telling him. I what couldn't help this? him out, Flappa and then everything. He oh yeah, this is dope. Hey, take her downstairs. Put her in custody. Come on, you can't. You can't bust me. No, no, this we're tossing your room. Go on, get out of here. Go to the officer. Can I get my jacket, please? All right, I want yeah, you guys to go up and down the hallway, see who's home. I want to know what she's been up to. Anything. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, tell him wait there. We'll meet him at the dispatch. Okay. That was our cab driver who picked up our reporter last night. Yeah. He's going to show us where he dropped him off. This car's in the parking lot. Uh, number three. It's a burgundy Japanese thing. It's open. So just, you know, hop in there and pop the trunk and, and take a knife and put it in where, he, he, uh, where the spare tire is. Okay, just take the knife out of the bag, take it out of the cloth, and just, just, just stick it in there. girl and the winner gets the prize <laughs> so when are you gonna run him out very good very good very very good is he gonna get arrested soon or what very good, very good. No. i don't think i ever said that yeah you did didn't you uh, well you should have said something because it would have saved me some grief <laughs> i think you got a good shot at it and that's what i said here's a little something for your collection These are pretty serious sleeping pills, John. Yeah. Why don't you get these? Friend of Brenda sold them to her. Friend of Brenda's? Hmm? What are you doing with them? Those were pills I was going to take tonight. Going to mix them into a nice Cabernet and say, Arrivederci, cruel world. Well, what happened to change your mind? You said you'd meet me later. I actually found myself looking forward to being scathingly criticized for being such a complete idiot. And uh, I appreciate that you kept your word. Well, here's the idiots. Complete <laughs> idiots. I'm starting to get cold now. Like. Yeah, I'm soaked. Uh, I like it like this. Well, I'm cold and I'm wet. Now, why am I here? Well, Leo's got a theory. He's also got a Mickey of Scotch. Go with him. Let's hear your theory there now. OK. Well, our friend, the reporter, who was an honest, ink-stained member of the once honorable brotherhood of the pen, okay. meets up with this ex-customs officer who sends him on a wild goose chase down to the docks here okay. and tells him that he's going to meet up with somebody who's going to give him the inside dope on who rules the docks and how. All right. Yeah. 
We know this part because we found the cab driver who drove him down here. Right, right, right. So I'm thinking he's uh, he's waiting down here, out in the open, right in the light here, right? Maybe somewhere, I don't know. Say he was right around in here somewhere. Watch yourself. Don't go falling in there, because I'm not jumping in there. I'm not going to fall in. <laughs> I haven't had that much to drink yet. Anyway, Cheers. our guy is standing here, and he's looking down this way, I'm thinking, because he's expecting somebody to come from down there, either in a vehicle or walking, right? OK. Now, he's no yokel. He knows he is on dangerous ground, but I'm thinking, that's probably what he liked about his job. Well, I think that's true. I read about this guy. He was in Afghanistan chasing down the heroin and stuff in the 90s. He's yeah, all yeah. over the place, right? Really? Well, okay. Well, there you go. So okay. he's standing out here in the open, and he's looking down this way. He doesn't see a little fish boat coming by here, running with the lights out, just putting along, not making a sound. Guy on the deck picks up the 22, picks him off. Over he goes into the drink. I think I recall. Uh -huh. Hard to hear in here, I guess. Hard to hear up here. I think I should have heard you when you told me that. Maybe I shouldn't take a run at this police job. I don't think I ever said that. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Uh, well, you should have said something, because it would have saved me some grief. <laughs> I think you got a good shot at it. And that's what I said. Here's a little something for your collection. These are pretty serious sleeping pills, John. Where'd you get these? Friend of Brenda sold them to her. Friend of Brenda's? Hmm? What are you doing with them? Those are the pills I was going to take tonight. I'm going to mix them into a nice Cabernet and say Arrivederci, cruel world. Well, what happened to change your mind? You said you'd meet me later. I actually found myself looking forward to being scathingly criticized for being such a complete idiot. And uh, I appreciate that you kept your word. Well, here's the idiots. Complete <laughs> idiots. It's starting to get cold now. Yeah, I'm soaked. Uh, I like it like this. Well, I'm cold and I'm wet. Now, why am I here? Well, Leo's got a theory. He's also got a Mickey of Scotch. Go with him. Let's hear your theory there, now. OK. Well, our friend, the reporter, who was an honest, ink-stained member of the once honorable brotherhood of the pen, okay. meets up with this ex-customs officer who sends him on a wild goose chase down to the docks here okay. and tells him that he's going to meet up with somebody who's going to give him the inside dope on who rules the docks and how. All right. Yeah. We know this part because we found the cab driver who drove him down here. Right, right, right. So I'm thinking he's uh, he's waiting down here, out in the open, right in the light here, right? Maybe somewhere, okay. I don't know. Say he was right around in here somewhere. Watch yourself. Don't go falling in there, because I'm not jumping in there. I'm going to Sorry, I'm not going to fall in. <laughs> I haven't had that much to drink yet. Anyway, Cheers. our guy is standing here, and he's looking down this way, I'm thinking, because He's expecting somebody to come from down there, either in a vehicle or walking, right? OK. Now, he's no yokel. He knows he's on dangerous ground. But I'm thinking that's probably what he liked about his job. Well, I think that's true. I read about this guy. He was in Afghanistan chasing down the heroin and stuff in the 90s. He's yeah, all yeah. over the place, right? Really? Well, OK. Well, there you go. So okay. he's standing out here in the open, and he's looking down this way. He doesn't see a little fish boat. Uh, I like it like this. Well, I'm cold and I'm wet. Now, why am I here? Well, Leo's got a theory. He's also got a Mickey of Scotch. Go with him. Let's hear your theory there, now. OK. Well, our friend, the reporter, who was an honest, ink-stained member of the once honorable Brotherhood of the Pen, okay. meets up with this ex-customs officer who sends him on a wild goose chase down to the docks here okay. and tells him that he's going to meet up with somebody who's going to give him the inside dope on who rules the docks and how. All right. Yeah. We know this part because we found the cab driver who drove him down here. Right, right, right. So I'm thinking he's uh, he's waiting down here, out in the open, right in the light here, right? Maybe somewhere, okay. I don't know. Say he was right around in here somewhere. Watch yourself. Don't go fall in there, because I'm not jumping in there. I'm not going to fall in there. <laughs> I had that much to drink.
drink yet. Anyway, <laughs> our guy is standing here, and he's looking down this way, I'm thinking, because he's expecting somebody to come from down there either in a vehicle or walking, right? Okay. Now, he's no yokel. He knows he is on dangerous ground, but I'm thinking that's probably what he liked about his job. Well, I think that's true. I read about this guy. He was in Afghanistan chasing down the heroin stuff in the 90s. He's yeah, all yeah. over the place, right? Really? Well, okay, well, there you go. So okay. he's standing out here in the open, and he's looking down this way. He doesn't see a little fish boat coming by here, running with the lights out, just putting along, not making a sound. Guy on the deck picks up the 22 picks him off, over he goes into the drink. Ask the wrong question, huh? He asked the wrong question of the wrong people at the wrong time. And that, my friend, is the general mess that you're gonna have to deal with if you get the job. Thanks for bringing that up again, man. Let me hit on that, will you? <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> How's it going? It's good. You going up for that interview with the police board? It's in five minutes. I'm on time. Oh, man. Good luck, pal. Hey, thanks. Hey, and thanks for the drinks last night. Hey, you can call me anytime, man. Don't forget it. Dominic. Not just yet. There's going to be a couple of minutes, and I'm yeah. going to call you in. Good. Do you want anything? I'm holding a cigarette. You're going to be fine. Hey, break a leg. Thanks, man. <clears throat> We're ready for you.